Hello and welcome to Red Leaf Designs. I'm Jeremy, my wife Cassandra is behind the camera, and we make canoe covers for people. Uh, we get a lot of questions about custom canoe covers that aren't necessarily listed in our online website library, and we do make covers for custom boats. The catch is that we have to have you take a few measurements. We're about to take measurements on this boat, which is a custom Winona Voyager uh, that has the sides cut down so a standard cover won't fit it. And I thought I'd just have you guys walk along with me while I take those measurements so that you can see how it's done. To begin with, like most things, uh, preparation is the key. So we'll begin by gathering a few supplies. The first thing you'll need is this. It is our custom measurement guide for a custom canoe cover. That will have instructions that are more detailed than what I'll give you here today. It also has places to write down all of the measurements and it tells you exactly what we need. So that's item number one. If you don't have a copy of this, just email us at hello at redleafdesigns with an S at the end of designs.com and we'll send one to you. The next thing you need is, of course, a pen or a pencil so that you can write down the measurements. You'll need a tailor's tape, which is just one of those fabric tape measures like a, a tailor or a, a seamstress would use. The longer it is, the better. This one's about 10 feet, um, but the longer it is, the better. If you don't have one of these, you can use a piece of rope or string and wrap that around the boat and then measure that with a regular tape measure, but this is a lot more convenient. Um, you will also need a regular tape measure. This one uh, is 25 feet. You just need to make sure that whatever version you use is longer than your boat. As long as you have a tape measure that's longer than your boat, you're all set. Um, you'll need a piece of paper. So this is just brown craft paper, but you could use wax paper. You could use newsprint. You could use a piece of wrapping paper. Um, you could use the back of a piece of wrapping paper. And I have it taped to a piece of cardboard so that it's easier for me to trace my bow and stern. So this will be the bow side, that'll be the stern side, and I have that all, uh, all taped there. You'll need a marker. Um, a marker works best when you're tracing the bow and the stern, so this is just a Sharpie marker. Um, you can use a pen or a pencil, but this is easier, so something like that. And then this isn't listed in our measurement form as something that you should gather, but I also use tape, and you'll see why in just a few minutes. The other helpful thing to have is a set of sawhorses, so the boat's up off the ground. We'll be measuring around the hull, and if you don't have sawhorses and the boat's sitting on the ground, it's really hard to get that tape measure around the boat. So sawhorses are wonderful, boat stands are fine. If you have folding chairs, you can put the bow and the stern of a folding chair outside on your lawn. Um, when I've taken measurements at campgrounds and races and things like that, sometimes I just prop the bow up on the tailgate of a truck so that the stern is on the ground and the bow is up. You could do the same thing on a fence. You could do the same thing with a porch or a railing. You just want to get the boat up off the ground so that you can work underneath it easily. Uh, the final thing that you may want is a helper. Um, it's really useful to have somebody to write measurements down so you don't have to use the tape measure, put it down, write down a measurement, pick the tape measure back up. And it's also helpful when you're measuring a wider boat or in the center section of your boat to have somebody to work the other end of the tape for you. So, once you've gathered all those things together, it's time to get started. The first thing that we're going to do is measure the bow of the boat. So I'm going to bring you over here, and we are going to measure the height of the bow. Um, there are a number of ways that you can do this. This is the easiest way that I've found. Um, before I do this, let me say that all of these measurements just need to be uh, accurate enough. Don't worry about getting down to a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch or even a quarter of an inch. If you round to the nearest half inch, we're in great shape. So um, our fabric has some stretch to it, so we'll always sew the cover a little bit smaller than the measurements, and the fabric will stretch to accommodate that extra. Um, so don't worry about being hyper accurate. Just round to the nearest half inch and we're all set. So I'm going to take this straight edge and I'm going to put it on the bottom of the boat, and then I'm going to take my measuring tape and I'm going to put it on the straight edge, and you can see that that is about a 16 inch bow. At the very tip, the top of the bow, it says 16 inches. Now this is a pretty easy boat to measure because it doesn't have a recurve. If you have a prospector style boat or an old wooden canvas boat with a bunch of recurve on it, you want to measure to the highest point of that boat, which won't be at the front, it will be up here. Um, that's okay, you'll measure it the same way. Um, just be aware that it's not always the front of the boat that we need, we need the highest point of the boat. So you'll do that on both the bow and the stern. There's a place to write that down in the measurement packet. Once you've done that, we need to measure the length of the boat. And this is where, I'll be right back. This is where I need my tape. So this tape is going to make this a simple one person job. I'm just gonna break off a piece of the tape. I'm going to put the tape measure at the front of the boat. 
and I'm going to tape it down so that it can't fall off the boat. Um, if this boat was a boat with recurve, again, you want to measure from the most frontward, or most frontward, that's a terrible description. You want to measure from the farthest point forward to the farthest point backward. So that may not be the tip of the, the bow that you just measured for, um, for the height, because if that boat has recurve, you know, the front may be way out here. So anyways, just make sure you get the actual length from the farthest forward to the farthest aft point. And what I'm going to do is just walk this tape measure back, tear off another piece of tape, and then tape it down to the stern here. In this case, this boat is 17 feet 6 inches, you can see that there. And I want this tape to stay in place on the boat while I'm measuring around it. So the way that you do that is you pull off a whole bunch of extra tape from your tape measure and you just set it down on the ground. And now it won't fall off the boat and the tape measure itself is taped to the boat. So this makes things a lot easier for all of the next steps that we're going to do. Um, so I would write down 17 feet 6 inches in my measurement packet and I would continue on. So next we're going to begin measuring the boat every foot from the bow to the stern. As I'm doing this, there are two measurements I want to take. The first is what we call the hull measurement. And that measurement is from the outside top corner of one gunnel, around the boat, and up to the outside top corner of the other gunnel. So that's measurement number one. Measurement number two is the full circumference of the boat. So you might start here at the top edge of this gunnel, wrap down around the boat, come up across the empty space between the gunnels and stop in the same place you started. So that's a full O measurement. The circumference is a full O all the way around the boat. It's a circle. The other measurement, which we call the hull measurement, is from the top edge to the top edge, and it's a U-shaped measurement without including that space between the gunnels. So we want to get those two measurements every 12 inches all the way down the boat. And it really doesn't take as long as you think it will. So let's go ahead and do that together. I'm going to do it from over here so that you can look over my shoulder as if you were actually taking the measurements yourself. I'm just going to take the edge of my tape using the inch side, and I'm going to put it right here at the 12 inch mark. And then I'm going to gently pull the tape so that it comes up. And in this case, I'm going to call that 31 and a half inches. You can see it's actually just a tiny bit more, but remember I said round to the nearest half inch. So this is 31 and a half inches for our hull measurement. Now I want to get the full circumference as well. So I'm just going to wrap that tape. Well, shoot, I'll push that guy down. It would be easier if I was underneath that, uh, that main measuring tape, but you can see that's 37 inches full circumference. So the two numbers that I would write down for this boat are 31 and a half and 37 inches. That's at the one foot mark. So now I'm going to move to the two foot mark and I'll do it again. This is the first measurement, which is our hull, or sorry, our, just our hull measurement. That's 33 inches. And then if I take the full circumference, that's 41 and a half. And then I would go to three feet and do the same thing. And in this case, it would be 35 inches and 46 and a half. And I would continue on down the boat, taking those measurements and writing them down. Um, this is where it's really useful to have actually two other people. One person, when we get to the middle of the boat, to help you handle that tape across a wide boat and a third person if you can, so they write the measurements down and you don't have to put this tape down every time and jot it down. Even if you do it all yourself, I can do a boat in maybe 10 or 12 minutes. Um, if it's the first time you've done one, it might take you 20, but it's still not bad. If you have a couple of helpers, you can do this whole process in just a few minutes. Um, I will show you at the middle of the boat, um, it can be challenging if you're by yourself to take these measurements, and here's how I do it. Um, if I wanted to take this nine foot measurement, I would actually flop the tape over the boat. And then I'm just going to hold this end of the tape and reach under to get the other side of it. And now I can get this measurement, which is 49 inches and the full circumference is 71. Um, so that's how I would, I would work over the middle of the boat. Now, this is again where it's nice to have somebody to write these numbers down. I would have to let go of the tape to write the numbers down. And if I had to do that, I would roll the, the tape over the boat like this so I didn't have to crawl under it again. Um, I think that's about it for how you take these measurements marching down the boat. You'll notice that in the packet we ask you to measure the widest point of the boat. And after you've taken all of these measurements, what you'll do is look at the list of measurements and find the biggest measurements on that list. Then you would go back to the boat and measure in that area to find the widest point of the boat. The point, well not widest, but the, the biggest circumference.
Um, and you would take the two measurements at that point as well. That is essentially what you have to do to measure this whole boat. Um, there are two other things we have to do before we've got, gathered all of the information that we need from you. One is that at the front of the boat, you've got a carrying fort, or you might have a deck and you carry under the front of that deck. Um, what we need is the measurement of that carrying point so that we can sew a slit in the top of the bag and you can reach through the bag to carry or tie the boat down. So in this case, of course, that's 22 inches. So you would write down 22 inches as your carrying port position. And then the final thing we need to do is get a tracing of the bow and the stern. So I'm going to grab that piece of paper and that cardboard, which are right here. And then my marker is here, and this is how you take that bow and stern tracing. This, is, this can be a one-person job. You could also have a helper if you needed somebody. Um, the important thing is it's easiest if you have your paper taped to a piece of cardboard, or if you don't have a piece of cardboard, almost everybody does have a cookie sheet. You could tape this to a cookie sheet too. So again, any big piece of paper, craft paper, wrapping paper, newspaper. Um, I've even used paper towels taped together at a campsite once, but here's what you do. You just hold it against the boat like this, and then you start, make sure you start at the bottom. Um, don't start on the curve here, start on the bottom where it's fairly flat. And you just put your pen down and draw your line up to the top. And that gives me my bow tracing. That is the profile that I need. I'll just mark it as bow. And then I would turn this around and go do the same thing on the stern and I would be done. Um, when you send these measurements to us, all of this is explained in the packet, but you can either mail the bow and the stern tracings to us um, in a you know, snail mail envelope and email a copy of the filled out form that you've either scanned or photographed, or you can mail it all to us. We're happy to take it either way. Um, unfortunately, we do really need these tracings um, in physical form. If you copy it or take a picture of it, it may not end up being the right size. And so it's best for us if you actually mail these to us. And our address in all of those directions are in the mailing packet. I think that covers it. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to let us know. You can reach us at hello at redleafdesigns.com. You can go to www.redleafdesigns.com. And we always welcome your questions. Uh, we look forward to answering them. And we really appreciate your time and your business. Thank you. Have a great day. <laughs> How was that?